page 128. Delusional teachings were created, which derisively mock all truth and distort the forms of the spirit and of the creation into complicatedness. The values of the creation, however, and the values of the spirit, their forms and their way, are in truth extremely simple and uncomplicated. The spirit-based, upwards rising, takes place according to law-based periods and determinations, precisely within brazen regulation of the creational laws and recommendations and their following. Therefore, if irrational teachings are rampant amongst you, as, for example, those of the so-called Jacob's Ladder and similar forms, then these mean no more than malicious misguidances which could only arise from attempts of religious aspects, therefore back connections. Once more, the earth human being should be used as an allegory at this point. When a human descendant steps out of their childhood stage, when they have obtained the laws and recommendations for the leading of their worldly life through their parents, then they are fully on their own and therefore reliant on themselves alone. Therefore, he or she has to master his or her life themselves and also live according to this unwritten law. Therefore, he or she is autonomous. Their back connection with their parents rests in them only as knowledge and certainty that they were their progenitors and granted them a certain upbringing. An upbringing that embodies nothing other than fundamental laws and recommendations in all things that should guarantee a regulation. But if the parents commit the error that they educate their descendants with irrational teachings, then these become anchored in him or her, and he or she becomes dependent on them throughout his or her life, and thus dependent. The initiative for their own evolution is thus taken away from them already at the beginning of their existence. It is recognizable that this is extraordinarily pronounced in the application of the religion because through it the human being becomes a slave of what they have been taught. The dependency and lack of autonomy is expressed just as strongly as where parents bind themselves to their children, their descendants, with regard to upbringing and feelings, so very much that a bondage arises when the parents then end their earthly existence, the descendants are then all of a sudden exposed to the reality and the environment, fully defenseless and barred from any power which would make them life-worthy and stable in life, because they were indeed deprived of their self-rule and autonomy and forced into dependency in the form of a back connection. From this cognition, even the unknowing and unlogical earth human being must obtain the clarity that the spirit alone lives according to the same laws and recommendations of creational regulation and cannot simply disregard them and that the creation itself however likewise cannot disregard its own laws and recommendations when the creation thus creates a new spirit it is not placed into a dependency on the creation but it is only endowed with the education in the creational laws and recommendations and assured of its self-rule and self-existence. Accordingly, the new spirit has to go the way of its evolution itself as an autonomous existence, which at the beginning only has the knowledge of the fact that it embodies, as a spirit form, a creation of the creation, endowed with the knowledge of all laws and recommendations which guarantee the brazen creational regulation. Everything additional in the following lives, however, the learning, acquiring, searching, researching, and recognition, and the gathering, using and developing of knowledge, and abilities, and so on and so forth, is left to the new spirit itself and falls into its autonomy and self-rule. Innumerable, innumerable irrational teachings, theories, views, assertions, laws, recommendations, and systems have over the course of the time, been thought up and ingeniously contrived by human beings in order to drive the human beings into enslavement and exploitation and to let them fail in the reality of the life. 
always and constantly. Attempts were made to bring the real things of the life under control by means of measures from outside, in which case the coercion played the most decisive role in this evil game. But whether the earth human being undertook, they were still not able to escape the creational laws and recommendations and to force them under their own rule. Everything proved to the human beings over and over again that the life does not merely grow from the inside outward as the human irrational teachings so gladly explain, especially the irrational teachings of the religions and spiritual sciences. And especially the latter must be conscious of the fact that all teaching, that the teaching, quote, all life grows from the inside out, brings forth destructive consequences and displaces the truth. In the inner of a seed, an invisible life form indeed slumbers, and in the inner, the spiritual and the human vasin also unfolds itself in order to then come to the fore according to creational laws and recommendations, depending on their time. But this inner and invisible life form represents only one autonomous factor in itself. The second autonomous factor resides, or is located, outside of the inner, in material and in spiritual form. Serving as an example, here is the seed. Surely, an autonomous oneness in itself is not, it is not able to evolve, to germinate, and to grow into a fruit, because it still lacks the second autonomous oneness, which, in the union with the first, only then results in the super oneness, namely, the enlivening moisture from the outside. The moisture, or the water, etc., constitutes the second life essential factor, whereupon a union occurs and a germ and ensuing fruit can be awakened to the life. Thus it is the same with all other life forms, and also with the human being and his or her spirit residing within him or her. The negative egg of the woman can only be fertilized by the male sperm penetrating from the outside while the evolution of the spirit is likewise based on external influences, when experiences and innumerable other facts penetrate from the outside and unify with it, through which a union arises and a fruit in the form of knowledge and wisdom, etc. Thereby, it should be clearly explained that the statement corresponds to a profound, irrational teaching that all life grows from the inside outward, because there are always two autonomous onenesses, which when joined together, or united, form the hyper-oneness in itself. So there is, in every respect, always an inner and an outer. Were this not the case, why then should the spirit reside in the material human body? for a law-based determined time, in order to then again spend another law-based determined time in the otherworldly realm. It would make no sense, and would be unlogical, because the spirit then would, against all creational laws and recommendations, be able to evolve within itself without having to learn. This, however, would make the creation in itself unlogical and implausible. This means that the creation in itself would have to doubt itself, and thus its existence would not only be put into question, but that due to its own unlogic, it could never have existed. Looked at and considered retrospectively, this would mean that consequently, also, the Ur creation would have likewise persisted in absolute unlogic and would have been unexistent. The consequence would be a nameless nothing and a nameless duration in unexistence. In addition to the law-based evolution in their own human self-rule and self-existence, the human form also has to observe, observe other important things of law and recommendation, so therefore also their task of preserving the species to which they are obliged as an individual human being. 
The preservation of species begins with the bond of the marriage and is based on the relevant creational laws and recommendations, which are to every even only halfway logical thinking human being openly visible in the nature as a driving potency of leadership based form is thereby the positive the masculine this positive has to watch over everything to guide to protect and to lead it in recognition of the negative as a oneness of equal value however there must thereby must not be neglected from old teachings of the likewise old prophets, it has been handed down to you, earth human beings, that the man, a positive potency, is entitled to the form of the head of the family. In the broader, earlier forms of the former clans, incumbent upon him was therefore also the direction of all family issues internally and externally. When the clans were united into housing and living communities, it was then necessary to have a community head, a sculton which means bearer of the destiny, a man, therefore, who determined and led the fate. In the community, however, he needed closer co-workers in order to not be dictatorial but democratic. These co-workers were the creational and upbuilding capable human beings of the community and at that time were called jurors. In joint effort, they created the regulatory laws that served as a guideline for their work. These regulatory laws for the earth human beings in housing communities and living communities without exception were adopted from the nature and the knowledge of the creational laws and recommendations which were not yet forced into forgottenness. This is completely in contrast to the laws, recommendations, and paragraphs existing today amongst you earth human beings which are foreign to all natural laws and maliciously and malignantly, malignantly mock them. The old and original laws and recommendations of the human legislation were thus based on cognitions that flowed from the creational truth and wisdom, observed and extracted from the nature living in brazen regulation, which regarded as fulfillment of creational laws and recommendations. These laws and recommendations were followed and respected by your ancestors at very early times as individuals, as well as in the housing and living communities of the communities and districts in and in all the extended circles counties and lands the dignity recognition and respect in the following of the creational laws and recommendations were for the ordinary human beings just as self-evident as for the uppermost leadership of the peoples as well in the great developmental change of the times however and the therewith connected changes of the world and its inhabitants, the knowledge of this natural regulation, its adherence and following have been washed away in the all-consuming waves of the storm surge of the past and buried under rubble where everything now must be sought out and put together again. And to this end, the earth human beings are now picking themselves up. It must become clear to the human being of the earth that the positive, the masculine, is the leading potency of all potencies. That this, however, inequality requires a negative female potency in union in order to create an equalizedness and a hyper oneness. Positive and negative embody two potencies and onenesses which are in themselves autonomous and of precisely equal values. Carried over to the earth human beings, this means that man and woman, without difference, are to be acknowledged and to be treated as equal value, in which case the positive power, thus the man, has to assume the leading role and the comprehensive protective function. This is an Ur law which does not only lead back to the creation, but already to the Ur creation and is since then followed in all natural areas of life in brazen regulation. As the nature brazenly follows this law, how should it not also be characteristic of the human being? The earth human being embodies on their world the most highly evolved life form who must first and foremost 
as a result of their intellect and their rationality, recognize and follow the creational laws. Only in this manner is it possible for the human beings to be master of all lower life forms subordinate to them. However, it is not acceptable that subordinate life forms observe the given laws and recommendations while the ruling form disregards the same laws and recommendations. This has to be learnt and acknowledged by the earth human being again, because to them their knowledge of it has been lost in the past and has fallen into oblivion. The former knowledge of the laws and recommendations of deepest creational wisdom was displaced and replaced by a faulty human source of cognition. In the course of the evolution that is much praised by the earth human beings, which they so gladly speak of as the age of the enlightenment, they pushed their purely human intellect and their material intelligence that is much lauded by them step by step as the predominant factor into the foreground. Their purely material intellectual brain work became the most important form of development for them, through which inevitably the true form of the consciousness had to suffer evil damage. This is well known to the human beings, yet they have so far still never under, undertaken any serious attempts to change it. Even those who have a deeper knowledge with regard to these things, the astrologers, never undertook this step to attempt a change. Very clearly in their language, the human power of intellect is designated with the name Mercury, Mercurius. Mercurius, however, is quicksilver, destructive and poisonous, drawn as an allegory to the human, unspiritual form of thinking. A frightening resemblance arises, as it cannot be explained more thoroughly. Note, in the sense that quicksilver is the most appropriate allegory which thoroughly portrays the human, unspiritual form of thinking. This dangerous poison has been, and still is today, being fed and instilled into the earth humankind through innumerable channels. In the times of old, it was the traveling preachers, religious founders, leaders of the people, and scribes. In the new time, film and television, radio, books, newspapers, and magazines, new religious sects, and time immemorial religions. Finally attuned, in homeopathic doses, mild and deluding, soft words, in circumscribed empty phrases, and humanly exp explained expressions and speeches, the destructive poison has been and is instilled into the earth humankind, in which case the harsh and solely appropriate explanation of the truth is considered discriminatory, malicious, unhuman, and appalling. The truth, however, always sounds harsh and bitter, and it can only be explained in harsh and bitter words. Precisely the truth, however, is not gladly heard by the human beings, and they object to its harshness. However, only harsh words guarantee a right understanding and an unfalsifiable further conveyance and dissemination. This may be disturbing and offensive to many earth human beings, but the truth is not yet determined for them especially. Their consciousness evolution is still taking place in lower tracts, and thus they lack the understanding that the unfalsifiable truth can only be made known through unfalsifiable, harsh and bitter words. A human being who is not yet able to recognize this deep grounding fact is still situated on lower steps of the spiritual evolution. Their tendencies are therefore based on facts of self-deception, in false humanity, a wanting to be better than the others, and of placing themselves above the others. These human beings have not yet recognized the truth, and they believe that humane and unbitter words may announce the truth just as well. Through this, they prove that their sense of the truth and creational fairness still runs in lower tracks, and is thus still evolutionarily underdeveloped in the consciousness. Thus all words of the truth bounce off them, because they already feel that these are repulsive in their hard and bitter form. Therefore, the truth 
is only intended for those who recognize all harshness and bitterness of the truth and the words that announce it and who are able to process and evaluate it. All the others are not yet ripe enough for it and must become developed in lengthy clarification work for the understanding of the truth. This work, however, is incumbent as a task upon those who have recognized the truth and are also able to evaluate it accordingly. But caution is also recommended for those for these teachers because charlatans and deceivers are able to give themselves the semblance of the knowledge and the wisdom and to lead the human being into the confusion. These irrational teachers work according to the principles of the material intellect and according to rules that destroy everything. Through such irrational teachers and the incapable ones who object to the harshness and bitterness in the words of the truth, the true truth proclaimers, because they are still unknowledgeable of the truth, consciousness-based works of destruction have since time immemorial and also are still in an ever-growing mass being done in the new time as it could not and cannot happen any more rigorously and more maliciously and unrecognized in their immense scope. This cognition is very bitter for all those human beings who awaken from their lethargy and have seen the connections. Within them blazes the bitterness of the inability to change all these occurrences which have gotten very badly out of control of the good human nature and nature in the human being in the shortest time and to let the long hoped for paradise become reality. And because this is so, it is the highest obligation of all those, even only halfway knowing ones, wherever willing ears are, to scatter the seeds of the teaching of the Spirit and to support the work of those who announce harsh and bitter words of the truth. They need this help because they are alone and stand against a thousand million fold army of human irrationality.